Hello everyone and Happy New Year. I had some infuriating issues with files which prevented me from wanting to upload videos for the last month, but it's fixed now and I assure that there is some absolutely insane videos coming very soon. So let's get started. All right, it's the next day and we are just chilling at a lovely little restaurant. Not gonna stay here for much longer. We're gonna be on our way to the main location on the trip, which is super exciting. Plus it's just pouring with rain here. We were considering staying an extra day, but this rain is forcing us to move location, to run away and to find greener pastures. So let's get to it. <laughs> and just on the road, look at that. <laughs> Big one. Wow. How many of these do I have to see? You've got all the luck with these. Oh, <laughs> getting so wet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> completely soaked. <laughs> All right, I'm putting this away. Uh, I got David behind the camera because, well, it's pouring with rain and the snake is way too big to hold the phone in one hand, but incredible, so docile. First time ever showing this on my channel. We've seen three this year, but well, two of them were super high up and we were just very busy. It wasn't a filming time whatsoever for this one. I mean, we were just discussing these lately because uh, Pete has seen a few of them since he's been in Thailand, but they are truly one of the most like beautiful snakes in the country. I don't think I really appreciated these in the past, but so elegant with one of these faces, which is just so streamlined with that blue eye. Lighting's pretty bad here, so I don't know how well you can see that, but it's a really, really, really nice snake. And, you know, I'm actually gonna run back to the car. Yeah, I'm soon. getting wet. <laughs> let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go. All right, we have arrived in the Ratiwat, just getting some food right now. Still raining, but nowhere near as heavily as it was on the way over. That was pretty crazy and it's looking it's looking kind of clear in the direction that we're heading. So optimistic that we might get a bit less rain this afternoon. If the rain stays at this level, wouldn't be the end of the world either. We bought some umbrellas, so that's good. All right, and we are in the forest tonight. We have a big group. I think we are seven people tonight. So seven people gives you pretty good odds at finding something, even if it's not a good night for snakes. And uh, I'm sure you'll see the other people on video soon, but for now, just gonna be 100% focused. Let's see when we get the first snake of the night. Well, I probably spoke too soon because the second we got down to the river, it started absolutely pouring with rain, like pouring, 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 as bad, if not worse than it was last night. Now, I hopefully it lets off soon, but if it doesn't, it could be a long night. Ah, pray for me guys, please. All right, first snake of the night is unsurprisingly Hagen's Pit Viper. This is the most common snake in the area, typically the most common one to see at night, at the very least. So. Decent sized one though, an adult. I'm not gonna get any closer because it's difficult, it's tucked under and it's pouring with rain. And I'm getting bitten on the face by some kind of bug. So gonna wrap this video up quickly and keep moving in this horrible, horrible weather. The rain's showing no sign of stopping, but we changed location. That seems to have been a good idea because if I zoom in up there, third Gonyosoma oxycephalum of the trip, sleeping high up in a tree. And then as I was looking at that, I looked down the path and I spotted another bright green thing hanging out in the underbrush this time, a much more accessible location. You guys can see that, of course. Nice sort of cyan, blue colored Hagen's Pit Viper, male. It's very, very slender male in ambush, waiting for frog, gecko, small mouse, whatever to cruise on by. So pretty cool. Yeah. After one of the slowest nights we've ever had in this area with one, two, three, four, five, six, and then me, seven people, Finally got something cool. Our first elapid of the trip. You guys all know what that is by now. It's featured on David's channel a thousand times this year. It's featured on my channel a thousand times this year. It's Taps Ming Ass, the Malayan crate. <laughs> Taps Ming Ass, yeah. The Thai name is Taps Ming Kla, or Taps Ming Class, but we've given it that little nickname. And as usual, pretty docile. David's just holding it by the tail and it's chilling there. Twitchy as always, which makes people think they may strike, but typically this species almost never bites but you know what justin bieber said never say never yeah well with the wild the wild ones we get a hold of like never bite but they do in captivity and they never look like a particularly dangerous snake they got those little stuffed animal eyes and this one's got a really cool little singular spot on the back of its neck right there it's got some big boss scar on his venture near the tail as well there's also like some scarring mid body there yeah. where's the scar right between my fingers Hmm, indeed. Maybe something took a bite out of it. I might have been chomped on by a tofu. 
<laughs> There's a ton of bats in here and David's being particularly brave going in and getting swarmed by them. <laughs> They're almost hitting us in the face. Whoa. I've made the mistake of joining David and now I'm getting whipped around my ear by bats. Whoa! I don't think there's an exit on the other side. Is it just a wall? All right, guys, a very soggy Rupert coming at you after we caught that Malayan crate and saw that vine snake. We are gonna switch up location. This change of location turned out to actually do well, but it's still been a very slow night. But uh, we're gonna keep going, actually. See if we can get a snake in that amount of time. So let's go. Ah, oh, I spotted this uh, extremely clapped, very dull Puiga Nigriceps up here. You can see David's oh, way down there. Yeah, 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 don't worry. It's not going anywhere. But yeah, we're gonna catch it and get a good, better look at it. Although this one, by the looks of it, maybe best left there. All right, here's the Puiga Nigriceps in Pete's hand. Just got down here. You can get a slightly better look at that. And as we were looking at this, a tire spotted. Uh, very difficult to see right now, but where, 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 where? Well, over there at the end of that branch, there is a bronze back sleeping. I think it's uh, Dendrolaphus formosus by that bright green venter. But before we go and catch that, let's take one more look at this lovely negro set. Do you mind if I take it in hand? This is more of the one we associate with occurring higher up the peninsula. This much darker form with the clear brown dark spots on the back. Down here near the Malaysian border, it's quite common to get that beautiful vibrant orange form of the green head, which is actually really nice. But this is pretty plain, but regardless, I still love the head shape of these guys. Okay, after some, after some action, which we never capture because whenever we're getting a bronze back down from high up, it always takes both hands from all of us. So nobody can ever film. Pete actually made an amazing catch as it went flying down from the tree. So congrats to him. But here you can see, not a particularly beautiful one, kind of similar to that one we had in Patalung. It does have some nice yellows on the tail and you can see that ultra kind of neon cyan green on the venter. But yeah, nice elegant bronze back. One thing about these is people often point to them having huge eyes. The eyes aren't actually larger than the other bronze backs per se. It's just they have a much shorter snout, so it looks larger in proportion to the head. But yeah, nice, nice little snake. Let's keep moving. Right, David just spotted this um, nice little sub-adult Boiga benculoensis. This is kind of the truest sub-adult I've ever seen. You can really see the juvenile pattern is still there, but it's just got the green starting to come in on the head and upper body. So kind of nice to see one of this age. This is a species we've seen on the channel so many times this year, as it is one of the most abundant, or at the very least, one of the most detectable jungle dwelling snakes in Southern Thailand. They're quite visible and they cruise around in typically lower areas like this, which is very much within your eyesight with a torch while cruising along a trail. Oh here, you can really see this one nicely now. Boiga benculoensis is such a favorite of people coming here for the first time. And when that green starts to come in, they are truly an awesome snake. So let's keep going. Oh, that break in the rain didn't last long. It has returned, but hopefully we can keep up this momentum. I don't want it to die off, so I'm gonna keep grinding. The other guys are just over this wall somewhere. Let's go. Well, here we've got a little Ehetila mcterazans. First one of the night, first one in hand at this location. It's a cute little snake, nice one, but let's get a move on because I want to find some more snakes and I'm absolutely starving hungry. Here we just grabbed ourselves another mick, but considerably larger this time. Let me get my hand in shot. I think it might try and bite me in a second. It's doing a mouth opening, which is kind of unusual for this species, but I'm gonna get a close up of this thing doing its really odd mouth opening bossery. <laughs> yeah, Mick Terrazans, nothing else to say. So up here, we just got our second elegant bronze back of the night, this time a tiny juvenile, which is quite nice. I might even get my camera out for a picture of this one since I haven't seen a juvenile for a good like four and a half years, probably. All right, here's a look at this little baby form. It's not as small as it actually looked when it was up there, but certainly more than half the size of the ones we've been seeing so far on this trip. And it's got this incredible vibrant tongue, vibrant green on the sides, no yellow on the ones we've been seeing. So not as beautiful as they can be, but a nice tan color on top. And every now and again, you guys can see that blue coming through. Certainly a beautiful snake, but we've seen three of these on the trip so far. So let's keep moving. All right, while we were bossing about in the stream, looking at vine snakes, Satya, caught this really nice young sub-adult mangrove cat snake, our first one of the trip. Really cute when they're this size. They don't tend to be very defensive at all at this size either, although when I booted it in the head a second ago, it did open its mouth. But yeah, pretty damn docile. I just picked this one up like this and it's just chilling in my hand. 
such an awesome color pattern like that really is some of the best color contrast around in the in the world without a doubt that black and yellow coloration well it wouldn't be a trip to Naratiwat without david spotting wirus this time it's like a young adult female a particular size morph of the species that we've never seen before and in the most typical wirret spot ever in the world what do you think there it goes. <laughs> Let's go take a look. We'll get it out for, for a closer look in a second. We're just enjoying this awesome in situ here. But really, if you don't know what to look for, this is such a hard species to see. And it's a really beautiful pattern. Both adult females we've seen have been like dark chocolate brown with very dark banding. But this one's sort of just progressed out of its pale juvenile sub-adult form and into this kind of darker morph. Um, we're not 100% sure about what these eat. I bet small mammals are on the cards too for these. But uh, like many snakes, they're probably generalists, but typically their niche means that they catch a typical type of prey more often than others. Uh, we just moved this branch here. Now you can see this beautiful pattern and we're pretty sure this is a female. We, we're having some we were having some considerations as to whether it could be a male because we've at it's at that size where we don't actually know what either sex looks like this, but I think this brown color is very typically female and well would you believe that just after the last one pete spotted another adult wirret and this time it is a true male you can see huge difference i mean actually kind of subtle difference but should be very noticeable to you see it's got those greens on the dorsum the uh, very clearly black and white banded kind of chin and also when under in its underside it has it's very gray instead of that orange extremely slender tail too but damn males are so cool really really beautiful and they have this incredible mossy pattern which certainly doesn't blend into this particular mossy rock but it does blend into mossy logs that's their microhabitat indeed this one was actually spotted on the move which is maybe i think the second time we've ever seen a wirus on the move and makes this where it's pit viper number 11 for us which i'm sure puts us up in the upper echelons of people to have seen the most of this species which is notoriously rare in Thai Peninsula Malaysia but in this particular spot they have a high population and we have certainly got down the knack of finding it and apparently Pete's got down the knack of finding them too now so congrats on that Hello. all right back to the road now I think that's time to wrap up it's getting pretty damn late but it was a good night honestly despite the weather very happy with that and uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow Hello, just popping in again to say thank you so much to all the new subscribers and followers of my channel across 2022 and everyone else who helped us grow an incredible amount. I have huge plans for 2023 and want to take the videos and consistency to a whole new level. So smash that like button and I'll catch you again in just a few days for another crazy video. Peace.